Hello, everybody, and welcome to the J72 Gaming and Review Channel. My name is Jacob, but you can just call me Jay here. Here on this channel, we are big fans of dinosaurs and the games revolving around them. And I have spent the past year making videos on both the Isle and Path of Titans. So today I wanted to reflect on that past year and let you know about both games, how they've progressed through their lifespan, and give you some pros and cons of each. And generally, help you figure out which one of these is worth your time in 2022. But everybody, with that quick intro out of the way, I welcome you to subscribe to join the Sauropod Squad here on YouTube. I would love to have you guys in the herd. But for now, though, just make sure you sit back, kick back, and go grab that snack as we get into today's review of The Isle versus Path of Titans in 2022. My snack today? Hot chocolate. Pretty good. <laughs> Let's start today off by explaining each of these games. Both of them are dinosaur creature survival games, where your main objective is to play as a dinosaur, survive by eating and drinking, and grow to become a full adult. Each game has their own take on the format, with the Isle being a realistic simulation survival game that tries to make each dinosaur move and interact with the world as they would normally in nature. Eventually, they plan to also add humans into the mix, which could really add a twist to the genre. Now, Path of Titans is taking the creature survival genre and bending it into an MMO atmosphere with quests, guilds, abilities to unlock, and even home caves to decorate. But at their core, they both play by having you control a creature and doing something to survive. I'll also mention here that while the Isle feels more realistic to play, Path of Titans is more realistic in its fossil record accuracy. So it's a bit of back and forth on what you're truly getting as a realistic experience. But hey, the Isle is making their dinosaurs how they want, and ultimately, I'm okay with that. It makes for the Isle to be a bit more unique in what it's going for. Because ultimately, the Isle's dinosaur are the Isle's dinosaur, as in what the Isle physically has made them to be. Either mess with genetics, or that's just the way they are in that universe. It builds a bit of lore, and I'm okay with the dinosaurs being slightly different than what they would actually look like in real life. And Path of Titans, on the other hand, is a game that really knows what it is and what it wants to be. It's an MMO, all while being realistic and accurate to fossil records. It's pretty neat. We're obviously going to cover both games extensively here today. So let's start with the one I personally started playing first, The Isle. Now, I want to be clear on which version of The Isle we're going to primarily talk about and compare today. And that is The Isle of Rima. I have a full video going over the differences on the original Isle, called Isle Legacy by the community, and then there is the new beta branch of the game called Evrima, which is the version of the game that is currently being developed. If you're not quite sure on the differences of the game and want to learn more specifically how it has changed over the years, then I welcome you to check out that video after this one. But all you need to know for this video is that we're going to take a look at the new Evrima version of the Isle, because it more closely resembles Path of Titans in development time, and the fact that Evrima is the only version of the Isle currently getting updates. Okay, let's get into it. December 20th, 2019. The Isle released a video called Hope on its YouTube channel. This video announced the future of the Isle Evrima, a complete rehaul to the game's graphics, animations, creature, and most importantly, gameplay. I, along with tons of fans of the legacy version of Ibrima, was stoked on the update planned ahead, but not everyone was as pleased. This meant a big change going forward, and essentially hit the reset button on a game that already had years of development. I personally prefer the path Ibrima is on more than I think the legacy ever could really have delivered. But I get it, it's pretty disappointing losing a game that you played for so long and being told that it's not going to be developed anymore. It's rough. Ivrima promised much, however. Weather changes, an entire new island rework with multiple biomes, the ability to graze as a herbivore or scavenge as a carnivore, seamless growth, and even teased the release of the Dinosuchus, a massive crocodile that would soon be, arguably, the most hyped addition to the new game as the years of development went on. And I do mean years. <laughs> you see, I guess now would be a good time to mention that the development time for Evrima has been a bit of a touchy subject in the community. 
Compared to Path of Titans, the Isle updates come months apart and can be very off-putting to a fan who wishes to see change in the game. The updates are generally adding a lot of content to the game, but the time between them have left the community often waiting on a breaking branch or something to grab hold of. And this breaking branch has snapped for many during these wait periods, leaving many to feel betrayed or abandoned by the game they love so much and hoped <laughs> to have updates for. But updates have come, and so far, as of 2022, there have been four major update releases, each bringing, like I said, many new and welcome additions to the game. Update 1, Ibrima's launch date, was dropped to Steam on June 18th, 2020, six months after the Hope trailer was dropped. In it, we had access to the Tenatosaurus and the Utah Raptor, as well as version 1 of the new island map of Isla Spyro. This version was rough around the edges, and the Utahverse Tenato gameplay, it worked well enough. But the world lacked the variety of species and overall needed more to do. Update 2 brought that needed variety by adding the Carnotaurus, the Stegosaurus, and the Hypsilophodon. The Dryosaurus had also snuck its way in sometimes between both Update 1 and 2. Update 2 dropped November 30th, 2020. Again, another 5 months after Update 1. Half a year was starting to become the norm for Arima's update cycle, but this update did bring three new playable species to the game, dramatically increasing the immersiveness of the world as it had the basic ecosystem of a large predator and herbivore and a smaller predator and herbivore too. The game was sufficiently enjoyable at this point, and this is the point in Arima's lifespan when I started to primarily play it over the legacy version. Next up on the list was update 3, and this is when the hype train really shoveled the coal on. Released on April 30th, 2021, after another five months of development time, Update 3 brought massive changes to the game, the likes of which I don't think we will really quite see matched for quite some time. Update 3 brought flying and swimming into the game. The flying reptile Pteranodon and the large semi-aquatic crocodile Dinosuchus. Not only did they introduce two versions of the creatures that systematically functioned completely different than the rest of the other terrestrial dinosaurs, but the map of Isla Spiral was dramatically altered. They expanded the rivers and added sections like the Jungle Goalie, a massive dammed off swamp, and started adding in human structures around the map as well. Like I said, this was the most interesting update for Ivrima, and I'm not sure us players are really going to get an update that impacts us so dramatically as Update 3 did. It was a really good time to be an Isle fan, honestly, but that was back in April 2021. How long did it take to get the next update out? Five months, right? Well, that brings us to today, in early 2022. And at the time of writing this, we have had update four for a month, <laughs> as it was released eight months after update three did. Woof. <laughs> update four brought us the diet system, where dinosaurs are tasked with finding the proper foods for their diet. This change was aimed to give the players more things to do while surviving and growing their dinosaur, but there are some aspects of it that I think may have made the game a bit worse to play. But I want to save that discussion to compare it with how Path of Titans is currently doing, so let's shift our focus over to that game and see how it has been progressing. Path of Titans has had a fairly different update cycle when compared to the 5 plus months habit Ivrima has undertaken. Path of Titans started its development in 2019, and has since offered the game up in a paid demo state, which is technical jargon to sound different than a beta state, but at this point when games like Fortnite can be in early access for years on end, <laughs> the words matter little. What does matter is that Path of Titans has continually updated their game on a monthly or bi-monthly basis. Now the updates are arguably less impactful to the game overall when compared to the map changes updates the Isle has brought, like it's Update 3 did, but not every change these updates bring can easily be seen on face value. And some of these updates Path of Titans has brought us players have changed the game in extremely valuable ways. Now the updates for Path of Titans aren't as easily numbered off like they are for the Isle, as they normally just add one dinosaur or maybe one mechanic change here and there. But let's dive into Path of Titans development over the past three years and see what they've really accomplished. 
Like I mentioned, Path of Titan has seemed to have an update to their demo nearly every month. Again, the importance of each of these updates can be washed out due to the sheer number of them, but what's important to take away is that by the end of the first year of development, they had 18 playable dinosaurs that they were working on. That's quite the difference to the six playable Ivrima had after one year of its life cycle. These dinosaurs, however, were basic and lacking a bit of uniqueness and abilities when compared to the creatures of the Isle. This would change, however, in time, as they added abilities in 2021, but for the first few years, Path of Titans had way less ways to control your creature in my opinion, and each felt a tad samesy. 2020 saw the continued development cycle of Path of Titans, with each month giving us things such as fishing, new skins to use, collision mechanics, eventually a new humongous map called Panjura, and plenty of new playables such as the Concavenator, Spinosaurus, Sukumimus, Styraticosaurus, Ceratosaurus, Kentrosaurus, Lambiosaurus, Metrocanthosaurus, and the Sarcosuchus. <laughs> like I said, they've got a lot of playables. And this brings us to 2021, where I personally started playing Path of Titans. At this point, both Path of Titans and the Isle were bringing some really cool additions to the game, and both are shaping up to be fantastic dinosaur creature survival games. I was passionate about both games enough to start covering them here on this channel, and honestly over that time I've seen Path of Titans grow tremendously, both in the game and in public eye too. You see, people are really starting to appreciate the quick update cycle that Path of Titans brings, and the updates they added in 2021 are a huge reason for this. As early as mid-January, they were already producing new playable species, a trend I might add that has not slowed down, nor do I see it doing so. But the big changes came with the update in April, which changed how the water worked in the game. You see now, when players drink from a water source, it will deplete in quality, forcing players to seek hydration elsewhere. This was huge for the game, as it forced players to move about the map and actually play the game. Path of Titans has had a history of being called a dinosaur chat room simulator, mainly because folks would often spend their time grouped up and just chilling. With no growth in the game, no real reason to do the quests other than unlock the skins, and plentiful water and food lying around, players have spent their time grouped up and simply hanging out. Nothing innately wrong with that, but from a survival gameplay perspective, well, it left a little bit to be desired. And that's where the water quality update came in and shook things up. This is the moment in Path of Titans history where I truly became a fan. Up to this point, I was mainly covering and playing the Isle because I enjoyed the game, and I only really covered Path of Titans because it made sense on the channel. But after the water quality update, I found myself coming back to the game and logging in just to simply play the game. The rest of 2021 had its usual updates with plentiful new creatures to play, such as the Alliramus, Iguanodon, Stegosaurus, Dospletosaurus, Ankylosaurus, Aotriceratops, Allosaurus, and my personal favorite, the Megalania. <laughs> Did I mention they have a lot of playable choices? Besides the stampede of new creatures arriving to Pandora, there were two massive updates, one being the home cave system, and the other being the long-awaited ability to grow your dinosaur. Now I got a whole lot to say on the growth system of Path of Titans and how it compares to Ibrima, so let's shelf that just for a second, and let's discuss this home cave system. The MMO aspect of Path of Titans has really, from the start, been the main thing I found interesting with the game. And so when they announced that they had updated the game to include a home cave system, which is essentially player housing, I was impressed. Not so much for the actual content within the game now, as the caves were fairly basic and the decorations you can place inside were fairly minimal at first. No, I was impressed by the simple idea that they were bending the known creature survival game and making it their own. Now the home cave system, it's not for everybody, and I think that's okay. You know, there's other MMOs out there like New World that has player housing and not everybody's a fan of that, and it's alright. But it's there, and it's a unique option for players to involve themselves with if they so desire. It's pretty special, and it goes to show that Path of Titans is okay at taking risks when updating and developing their game. I respect that. Okay, well, now that we have a good idea at how far these two early access games have come on the development side, let's dig in deeper and fully understand how each one plays, because ultimately, that's what is most important in a game. Like I mentioned earlier, Ivrima's diet system came with the most recent update 4, and has players and their creatures roaming Isla Spiral for their proper three types of food. 
and Path of Titans finally added in a growth system of their own recently as well, also tasking players and their creatures to grow, but they do so by having players complete quests to activate an increase in growth size. Both of these ideas on paper work very well. The Isles take on having a creature search for proper nutrients in the proper biome for each food type is an immersive and very realistic way to have players grow. And Path of Titans take on growth finally makes their version for an MMO creature survival game come full circle. Both of these systems are good on paper like I mentioned, and different players are going to like different types of gameplay. But I've played them both substantially, and there has been a shift in how players react to the environments around them in each game. Some for the better, and well... Some for the worst. Let's start again with the Isle of Rima. I mentioned earlier that the diet system may have actually made the game worse for the general player base. And I say this not because of the diet system as a concept or even as a functioning system in the game. No, I say this due to its implementation and execution. You see, having players of different species roam the map to find their food is a really cool idea to get your players out and about. It makes Tanatosaurus players look for potatoes in the forest, and the Paki players need to head to the plains to find their agave plants. This works well <laughs> if you actually put the potatoes in every forest and the agave in every plains. Unfortunately, this is where I think the Isle has tremendously fallen on its face. It honestly really bums me out. But generally speaking, the diets and the food required for them have really only been placed in the southwestern and central sections of the map making a very interesting and complex diet system into, for lack of better words, a clusterfuck in the middle of the map. I had extremely high hopes with Update 4, and it just didn't hit the mark for me personally. I do like that there are three requirements for each animal and creature to survive in the Isle, and it's pretty cool that the carnivores need to hunt out specific herbivores, and those herbivores will be in those locations for their plants. And these foods are labeled to be in forests and plains and rivers and swamps and stuff like that. So you go around the map expecting to find them, but when you get in the game, you realize that's not the case. Path of Titan's growth system has also been a contentious change in the game for the players. While many players seem okay to have to do the quest to grow, it's the amount of growth and thus amount of time required to get the full adult that many have been having issues with. You see, in Path of Titans, it will take you somewhere between 10 and 20 hours to get one dinosaur to full adult. Contrast this to the maximum 6 hours or so in Ibrima. And if you die on the way to full adult in Path of Titans, well, you lose a little bit of progress towards that full adult goal. This is less severe than losing your entire dinosaur, as you would in the Isle. And once you're fully grown in Path of Titans, you're gonna be at full adult for the rest of your time with that creature. But many fans were taken aback, almost hit with a bit of whiplash, at going from having an already grown dinosaur to now being required to spend a plentiful amount of time with each species. I will mention that, personally, I really like the long amount of time that it takes to grow in Path of Titans. As someone who has played way too much World of Warcraft in my day, and even prefers the slow pace of classic WoW over the newer, faster, drop and drop out version of retail WoW, I appreciate the slow burn of a character that you will spend weeks, months, if not years with in a game. It makes me cherish and enjoy the journey to endgame as much as actually being at the endgame, but I do understand that I'm kind of in the minority here and I just hope Path of Titans is able to bring more types of quests into the game to make that time spent a bit more varied. Perhaps then, the majority of the player base will kind of start to agree with me that it makes the growth experience all that much better. So that explains, at a general glance, how each growth system plays out. But how you actually survive, I think, is much different in experience than it can seem to be. You see, in both of these games, you are afraid to lose your creature. This breeds a fantastic atmosphere in the game where you're both scared to be caught up in a bad spot, maybe seen by a bigger and hungrier predator, or caught being too scared to move and risking hunger and thirst deprivation. How these two growth systems play out on the ground, however, is a very much different route to success. In the Isle, when you are a small juvenile dinosaur, you want to find all your diets, but usually you are going to be okay if you eat the wrong type of food. It will still fill your stomach, just not speed up your growth like the proper diet of the right nutrients would. What this makes the player base do is freeze. 
when they are in trouble. If a bigger Carno comes around the corner, it's usually a safer bet to just hide in the bush and simply wait till they pass on. Moving out of the area may risk you not being where your proper food is and thus losing your dinosaur to starvation and having to completely restart your growth on a new character. Staying quiet and hidden makes sense in this situation. It does, in time, fuel a very fun and horror-like game experience. Trust me, I've had plenty of fun times being a small hidden juvenile as a giant pack of Utah or Carno players walk past me, completely unaware that I was in the ferns right besides them. But overall, it makes the optimal route of successful growth a route that has you sitting still and hiding. Contrast this to the Path of Titans route, where the interactions seem to be a bit different. See, in Path of Titans, when you see a larger creature, you still want to remain quiet and hidden, but you'll want to get out of the area ASAP, because those larger creatures are likely to be in that area for quite a while as they start to complete quests and potentially even drink the water source to an unstable level of quality. This breeds a situation where you still have to be safe and cautious, but it forces the player to act rather than sit in a bush and hide. Plus, if you get caught in Path of Titans, you only lose a bit of growth time when you die making running from the area all that much more worth the risk. Now you may be able to tell by my tone of voice when describing these growth systems which one I prefer. And again, it really is the implementation of the diet system in Ibrima that has caused me to dislike its growth system a bit more than Path of Titans. That said, this is just in its current form, with its current map and its current lack of spreading out the food. This can easily be changed, updated, and fixed over time, which will allow scared little dinos in Isla Spyro a chance to actually run from a predator, since they know their foods will be in all locations just around the corner. But for now, let's put an end to this growth discussion. It's obviously a large discussion topic on both of these games, and many players are going to have pros and cons with how they have changed the growth system over this past year. But let's kind of shift gears now and discuss how the games play out on a PvP scale against other players. Alright, PvP discussion time. Player vs player combat in these games are a huge reason many players like them. Or even having the fear of dealing with other players in the dangerous world is enough for folks to thoroughly enjoy this creature survival genre. Honestly, the more time I spend with the Isle and Path of Titans, the more similar the combat actually starts to feel. Both of them now have full collision effects, things that did not exist in Isle Legacy or early demo versions of Path of Titans, and all their creatures are packed full of unique and interesting abilities for us as players to use against each other. The main difference in PvP for these games really comes down to the amount of species you will encounter, and how you will have to deal with them based off their size, speed, and if they are predators or not. Now obviously the Isle is bringing much less species to the battleground, and with only 9 playable species, each one is going to fill out a role that is wholly unique to itself. The Stego is going to feel like the slow and mighty tank out there with a huge HP pool and attack that you're gonna remember if you receive it. And the Utah is the only small and agile carnivore that can be using its pounce mechanic to shred the flesh and add a bleed to their victim. The Pteranodon is the only one that can fly, and the Dino is the only one that can swim effectively. Hipsy is small and fast, and Packy makes bone fractures a true danger to its predators. All of these creatures play well against each other, and honestly, PvP is something the Isle has gotten right. The attacks feel solid, and your abilities make you feel useful on the battlefield, and every species has their iconic strategy that you expect to see from them. Now, Path of Titans is honestly not too much different, but I have always favored how it feels in the Isle just a bit more. What makes it fun in Path of Titans, however, is that you have to unlock your abilities to feel unique. And while that may feel unnecessary or take too long in a world like the Isle, Path of Titans' MMO and questing gameplay cycle makes unlocking, purchasing, and aiming for abilities a fun and rewarding goal to pursue. Path of Titans does, however, have many more creatures in the game than Irima and thus each one feels a bit less unique sometimes. But even when you look at creatures that are generally similar in size, speed, and shape, say like the Dasplitosaur or the Metricanthosaurus, well the former has a bone breaking ability and the latter applies a stamina draining poison effect. So even if you feel like your presence on the battlefield is similar to another creature, you can try to use your unique abilities to turn the tide of battle in your favor. Some species definitely get the short end of the stick sometimes when it comes to special unique abilities, but overall, combat feels comparable to the variety of options the Isle of Rima has. 
In the heat of combat, both games look great, and they have both gone far to add cuts and blood to the areas that get attacked. Path of Titans actually does take this a step further by adding a scar system into the game. If you get, say your tail attacked by another creature and survive, over time your cut will heal and remain as a scar. It's pretty neat. The Isle could really use some scar systems too, but its creatures do already look fantastic before, during, and after a fight, so I can't complain too much. Overall, like I said, I really do like combat in both of these games. The Isle feels very realistic in its combat and how all the dinosaurs move around and attack each other, and Path of Titan still feels good like you're playing an MMO and using the abilities that you've unlocked and purchased. All while both of them remain to have precise movement, good collision, and generally just perform pretty well. Alright guys, I think I've given you a good general overview of the past year with both Ivrima and Path of Titans. Both have made progress, and both have had downsides that have upset some of their own community of players. Now let's rein it in and look at the overall pros and cons of each game as it stands as a complete product. Let's start off with the obvious. This game <laughs> looks great, fantastic even, if you can run it. <laughs> but the models, terrain features, map locations, and everything in between makes this game a stunning experience. I don't think anybody can refute that the Isles graphics and sound are top notch in the genre, and it is the easiest compliment that I can give the game. It just looks dope. In conjunction with the graphics, I want to specifically mention here the water effects. This water is not just one of the best water physics I have seen in the creature survival genre, but one of the best I have seen in video games, period. The ripples are realistic, and watching a dino glide through the waves is honestly pretty breathtaking. They really knocked it out of the water here. <laughs> water joke. My favorite thing I like about the Isle over Path of Titans is simply how the creatures control. They feel good to run around as, and the models and animations follow your command in a way that looks, feels, and performs exactly as you would expect. Nothing quite feels as good as sprinting as a Carno, lurking as a Dino, or soaring as a Pteranodon in the Isle, and that makes literally playing the game simply feel good. PvP feels balanced, as a good player can win with most dinosaurs if they know what they are doing. The Stego holds down the title right now as the hardest things to kill, but get a crafty Carno, a group of Utahs, or a sneaky Dino, and that Stego is going to have a difficult time. Combat is always the highlight of my time playing the Isle, and it is easily one of its biggest pros. Being able to fly around as smoothly as you can with the Pteranodon, and swim slowly down the river as a dino is a joy to be able to do. Many games just restrict you to a terrestrial setting, so it's nice to be able to take to the skies or dive into the water too. Variety is the spice of life, or so I've heard. And the last pro is that this game has a very interesting setting and hidden lore to it. It's mysterious, and the presence of humans on the islands makes the game feel a bit more unique unto itself when compared with what Path of Titans is trying to pull off. We even got our first look at how humans will work on the quality testing servers back in December, so knowing that they are not super far off in the future of Ibrima is an exciting aspect of the game to look forward to. Let's just hope it doesn't take 8 months this time, right? Now while the Isle's obvious pro to boast about is its fantastic graphics and sound design, Path of Titans has to be commended on their large pool of playable species. Having an absolute ton of herbivores and carnivores to choose from really makes you feel special in the dinosaur you have chosen, especially if you're going to be spending a lot of time with that creature, customizing and unlocking its abilities and special skins. And on the topic of unlocking things, I think Path of Titans deserves to be commended on their ability to make the creature survival game actually feel like an MMO. The questing is basic, but has come very far in its development, and being able to choose from different abilities makes your time spent rewarding and thus fairly fun. I also mentioned how the questing system and growth dynamics in the world force players to stay moving and to interact with the world around them, and it can't be understated how much this improved the gameplay for everybody. Having a reason to move around the map makes for more interactions between players throughout the day and leads to more fun moments of hiding, running, chasing, and of course, fighting. 
The speed of development also needs to be praised here, as having new content on nearly a monthly basis is just enjoyable from a consumer's perspective. It gives us new things to try when we play, and thus a reason to keep coming back to the game. And these updates are always, at least to me, enough. Some are new creatures to try, others change how systems work in the game, and then there are ones that I never really would have expected but enjoyed the surprise of, like the home cave system. It really is a good time to be a Path of Titans fan. I should also mention that this game has a ton of mod support, and while I didn't really cover the benefits of such thing here in this video, it adds even more content and fun into a game, and really lets the fan of this game run wild with their imagination. Also, it finally let me get to play a sauropod in a video game again with the Argentinosaurus mod, so that's pretty damn cool. I'd also like to touch upon how helpful, friendly, supportive, and seemingly trustworthy the developers have been to the community, their supporters, and even me personally. I was lucky enough to work with the Path of Titans devs when their new home cave system came out, as they granted me 50,000 marks to show off what an endgame cave would look like. I'll add a link to that video in a card here in the top right if you're interested in checking out what that side of the game looks like. But yeah, since then I've remained in contact with their marketing member, Lido, and I hope to continue working with them in the future. Sadly, I can't say nearly as many good things about the Isle devs, who often seem unapproachable or simply aggressive to content creators. I'm looking at you, Dondi. It would be really nice to have a lead developer that supports his community and actually considers this our game instead of just his game to dictate. Well, that might be a good way to lead into the cons of Ibrima, because while the good things of the Isle shine bright, the bad things falter and fall just as tremendously. Let's start off by discussing the Isle's optimization. Now, while the graphics are great, you really need a good computer to pull them off. For me, I can usually run the game in high settings with medium shadows, but when it comes to recording, I need to crank those settings way down or risk dealing with a whole heck of a lot of frame rate issues. There is also the issue of how the map chunks load, which causes the game to hitch pretty badly no matter what setting you have it turned to. So if you have an older computer with lower output, I'd do some extra research to see if you can really play this game to a level that you are comfortable with. Oh, the diet system. <laughs> this con hurts me personally, if I'm honest. I had such high hopes for this system, with tons of video ideas and challenges to film, but it, it just fell short. <laughs> really short, honestly. Now, I won't hark on it here too much, since I have already earlier in the video, but know that the poor implementation of the diet plants has been the single biggest reason I have played the Isle much less as of late. Again, I like the system. I like having to eat different types of food, but I don't like that the food is not where it could and should be. Use your Isla Spiral map to its fullest potential devs, come on! The lack of species is also a small con here for Ivrima, although it doesn't really bother me too much to be honest. But having only nine creatures when Path of Titans is producing nearly that many in one year definitely makes it noticeable. There is also the concern with the official servers and their stability, or <laughs> rather, their instability. I can't tell you how many times I've sat down to record an IELTS video and have been kicked out due to a server crash, only to log back on and realize that my creature has either been deleted or lost precious minutes or hours of growth time. This issue gets worse and better over time and usually is the worst around new update drops, but it gets bad and can really ruin a night of gaming for me. And last, but certainly not least, I'm sure this is many of your guys' biggest con, and that is the update speed. It is slow. <laughs> Let's be real, guys. Five plus months is not always an extreme amount of time for a development cycle. But in a game that already had players play its legacy version for a few years, even months feel longer than it needs to. And more recently, taking 8 months for the Update 4 diet update to drop, and in the lackluster form it did, well, as of right now I am personally being cautious with my excitement over future updates. Still excited, but realistically cautious. Alright, let's discuss what Path of Titans can do better, because it's not just Ivrima that needs a bit of polishing to become the perfect game we all hope it can be. The biggest issue I see going around right now is based on the controversial amount of time it takes to reach full adult. 
I did mention earlier that I do actually like the long amount of time it takes, but I understand that I am generally in the minority of that opinion. Players want their time to be valued, and the 10 to 20 hours required to grow does make a lot of people find other games that don't require as much commitment. The map is also... okay. I've learned to grow to love many areas of Panjura, but visually it lacks the awe and inspiration that Is the Spyro has to offer. Many people dislike the grayness to Path of Titans graphics, and I will admit that their foggy atmosphere at time just looks bland. I have seen other types of biomes in their engine with the use of mods, so I am excited to see what the future brings in regards to new maps, but currently Panjura is simply okay at best. The questing aspect of Path of Titans is its main gimmick, and one that I have already spent time boasting about how unique it is and that it is such an interesting take on the creature survival game. But <laughs> we need more. More varieties in the type of quest is going to do a lot for this game because it leans so heavily on it now due to its requirement for growth. I know that when the AI creatures are added to the game that it will add a whole new list of objective based quests and later things like the guild system will also add larger goals for groups of players to attempt but right now we could use for a little bit more for us to do. Having a large roster such as Path of Titans can be a double-edged sword. While it gives the player a ton of options in the type of creatures they want to experience, it leaves some to be forgotten when it comes to balance and thus players will, over time, start to play that creature less. For example, the Allosaurus is a fantastic new popular dinosaur that was added to the game, but by adding a new large theropod that is relatively fast and can compete with the best of the best means creatures like the Ceratosaurus and the Alliaramus are played a bit less now that there is a new, arguably better, option for them to play. It's a hard balance to achieve having each creature feel worthwhile, but it's worth mentioning here as a con. The roster is packed full of options, but how many we will actually see out in the world is often a different number. And the last con for today is that Path of Titans servers restart. A lot. <laughs> I think they are currently now on a three hour cycle, but it used to be a two hour. And while that is definitely better than having to deal with crashes like the Isle deals with, it's often jarring and just ruins immersion when you are forced into a new server, one with often a different type of day or weather, and one that may or may not have changed the water quality of the lake that you were just questing at. I think this is a small con, but it has bothered me, and getting a server restart notice in my Path of Titans series of videos is a reoccurring joke that we do kind of look forward to in each episode. It's going to happen to you if you play the game. Trust me. Overall guys, we are very lucky to have these games to play. Both are fantastic additions to the creature survival genre, and are truly leading the charge in innovation and design. I love the Isle for being a realistic, horror-driven survival game where you truly feel like the dinosaur and are immersed in the world of Isla Spyro. And I love Path of Titans for being the genre-bending MMO survival game I never knew I wanted, but have enjoyed watching grow into the game it is today. Many people liked in my last Isle vs Path of Titans video that I didn't give a winner, and I'm gonna do the same today. There is no one winner. Because honestly, both of them have aspects that make them great to play and both have cons that leave you a bit exhausted with the game looking to play something else. But I will leave you with this. Play the Isle if you want to be immersed in a world of terrifying dinosaurs, living and surviving on the edge of your seat as you truly become your creature for the night. Play the Isle if you want to hunt your prey while they nervously look around for signs of predators. Play the Isle if you want to fly as Pteranodon or run through the plains as a pack of Utahs. Play the Isle if you want to live the life of a dinosaur, but I do recommend you play the Isle, for it has proven to be a game that leads the genre of creature survival into a new and innovative gameplay experience. But also, play Path of Titans if you want to experience an MMO twist to controlling a dinosaur. Play Path of Titans if you like the long journey to endgame, because often the journey is as grand as the destination. Play Path of Titans if you want to form a bond around your chosen dinosaur as you spend its life growing, learning, adapting, and thriving in a world full of many different species and playstyles. Play Path of Titans if you really want to become a dinosaur because I promise you will experience much more than simply questing when you spend your time with this game as Path of Titans bends this genre of MMO and creature survivals to new heights and ideas. 
All right, everybody, I hope you like that update to Path of Titans and the Isle for 2022. And I do hope that it's obvious that I genuinely like both of these games a lot. And if you were to ask me which one to buy, honestly, I'm going to say get both. But I do hope that you found something entertaining out of this video or found a little bit of use out of the information packed inside. Time will really tell which game is really worth our time. But for now, I think we're all lucky to have not one, but two fantastic dinosaur survival games for us to play every night we want to. And honestly, that's pretty great. All right, dudes and dudettes, I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day, whether it's morning, afternoon, evening, or night. But until next time, I have been Jay, and I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Cheers.